Hey YouTube subscribers and watchers, what's up folks, this is Anki out here and you're watching SlideNerd. Welcome to Swift Tutorials for Beginners. Today we're going to talk about Constants and Variables Part 2. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how do you name your variables and constants. Specifically, we're going to look at the case called camel casing. And last, we'll discuss about semicolons in Swift. You can find all the tutorials on the videos of this series that is Swift under the header playlist on our homepage. In there, you can see this Swift tutorials for beginners. So all the videos will be in this particular playlist. You can also go on to slidenote.com, go on to tutorials in Swift, and out there you will find articles related to each and every tutorials which we'll be covering in SlideNote. So you can have, if you want to have a quick comprehension of the particular topic, so you can go to slidenote.com and read the articles out there. You can also find me on Udemy and you can search me as Ankush Deshpande and you will get this profile as my own profile. So open up your Xcode and let's get started. Let's take an example of what's a bad naming convention and let's identify what are the bad or the flaws in it. Let's say variable var a equal to 67. Next I have var b equal to 55. Next I have, let's say I have var c equal to 73 and now i need to find total so i'll say var d equal to a plus b plus c and this is actually a very bad way of naming your variables Simple because you, when you read a program, let's say you have a big program and you are reading out and you say, okay, you have var A, var B, var C. Now, what does A, B, C and mean? So that's a very bad way of naming your variables. You should always name your variables with what value they are going to contain. So I say that these are my marks of a subject. Let's say the first is nothing but marks in physics. So I'll say physics. Next is my marks in chemistry. So I'll say chem. And then I have my marks in math. So I'll say math. And then I know now I'm adding them up as my total. That is my T-O-T-A-L total. And I have instead of naming ABC, now I have to write out here as physics plus chem plus math. Now, when someone else is going to read this particular code, they'll understand, okay, we have got physics as value 67, the chemistry has a value of 55, and math has a value of 73, and the total comes out to be 195. Now this makes sense, but previously if I write A, B, and C, it makes no sense to anyone who's going to read a program. It's like A, B, and C. Oh, what is A, what is B, what is C? Well, in the course of the, pro in the, course of the program, you're going to write. In the course of the program, you're going to write, you are not going to make sense. So make sure when you, whenever you name your variables, the variables should make sense. So now we've learned how to declare a variable, which is the perfect way of declaring variable. Rather than using A, B, C, D, and X, Y, Z, you can actually use sensible names like physics, chemistry, and math, and then write total as another variable name. So please make sure that you follow this guideline. It becomes very easy for the coder and also for any other person who's reading your code to understand what is there in the code. Now, you can also declare variables in one single line. What I've done out here is I have written var physics, var chem, var math. In so many times, I'm going to write var, 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 and that's going to be very annoying. Instead of doing that, what you can do is you can actually place them all in one line. And we do this by placing a comma, and then I can write chem equal to 55, comma, math equal to, I can say, 73. And I'll just do one thing. I'll just get rid of all of them because if I don't, it'll give me an error. Now, I have declared all the variables in one single line and still the code is working. It's 195 as total. So this is how you declare variables in one single line. You have to have a comma separated list and only one single keyword that is var. Now this makes your code very short and easy to read. All right, so now before we conclude our video, let's take on the last topic of semicolons. Now in Swift, we do not make use of semicolons to end a particular statement. Unlike uh, other languages like C, C++, Java, and, and so on and so forth. 
So if you have uh, prior information about other languages, you must be having a habit of putting semicolons in the end of a statement. Now, uh, in Swift it is not required, but I personally believe it's a general good practice if you are coding in multiple languages. I don't think you should uh, leave this habit of placing semicolons in the end. Well, there is no error in Swift, but it's a good habit. So before we wind up, we'll quickly recap as to what we have done till now. We learned about how do you declare a variable, what is a sensible way of declaring a variable. Next, we learned about camel casing as to when should we use a camel case when you're declaring a variable. And lastly, we learned about use a semicolon, whether to use or not to use. So if you like what you saw, do not forget to like the video, share the video, and definitely comment on the video and let me know your thoughts about it. For the first time on SlideNerd, do not forget to subscribe to SlideNerd. You can also find me on Udemy as Ankush Deshpande. We are also on Twitter, so you can Google us for SlideNerd Twitter. We are also on Facebook, so you can Google us for SlideNerd Facebook. And all the codes of this upcoming series will be on GitHub, and you can Google us as SlideNerd GitHub. Alright folks, but that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.